Whitney.com. All right, so we're here at the Pool After Dark with Mr. Belding, Aaron's Dennis Haskins. Dark, I know, I love it. And you've been here so many times. What do you love most about hosting the party? It's Jersey. Yeah, of course. I mean, and it's honestly, it's become family with Howard and, and, and Deanna and Aaron. And I could name about 20 names of everybody that's here. I'm always treated with love and respect. I get chills thinking about it, honest to goodness. Because uh, I did a thing for Howard. Howard, come here real quick. This is Howard Weiss. Okay. And, Hi, Howard. And, and Howard has, and, and uh, DJ Hollywood, the reasons I've been coming in. But Howard asked me a few years ago, what was it, Howard? For, uh, for Hurricane Sandy, you did a so thing for our So employees. since I've been here a few times, Howard said, would you mind doing something for the employees? And it was so special to me that uh, that he thought that much of me and thought the other people would, would appreciate it, that it meant a lot to me. So thank you for that. Oh, I love it. Thank, thank you, Howard. Cool? So yeah, that's it's one really of the reasons cool. I love coming here is that the, I really, truly, it feels like family. It is. It is a family here in Atlantic City. And it's the Saved by the Bell family. I know. Oh, I love it. The Saved by the Bell family. I a suit tonight. What do you think? Well, you look really good. Thank you do I've lost look. 65 pounds. You, now, tell us, how did you lose this weight? I had surgery, to be honest with you. I was 333 pounds. Now, the surgery doesn't take, take it away, but it gives you the opportunity to get a head start. I, I gained like five pounds a year for 20 years. That's 100 pounds. Who knows? I got 20 years to get it off. So uh, my surgeon, Dr. Corman in Los Angeles, uh, did the sleeve. Gave me a head start, and then now you got to watch what you eat. I'm a whole different animal as far as food I eat. I had surgery three months ago, and I've lost 65 pounds at 65. Come on. What have you been doing right now? What kind of projects are you working on? I just finished working on a project that Jim Carrey is the executive producer of. Yeah, it's called I'm Dying Up Here. But now Jim Carrey isn't in it, but it's about comics back in the 70s getting started in L.A., and it's... It's an amazing project. There's, when was this going to come out? This will be out probably in the spring. It's going to be on Showtime. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a series. It might actually be the summer uh, because they really want to do a big launch on it. I'm in one episode to play a priest. Can't tell you any more than that. Oh, gosh, That's okay. It. Yeah, Principal a to very, a priest. Very special. Well, it's a very different look at me. I mean, I'm, it's a different role. Okay. So that's all I can say. Fine. You're dragging this stuff out. I know. All right. I like that, though. Let's keep yeah. talking. Let's keep talking. Yeah. So um, going back to Mr. Belding, you know, so many people know you as that. Does it ever get old? No. Okay. No. When somebody says, hi, Mr. Belding, yo, Mr. B, whatever it is, yeah. it's like a standing ovation. Yeah. I mean, that means they watch the show, they attach the show, they love the show. I've had people say, you helped raise me. Of course, you know, I mean, of course, it was the stories that they loved. And the entire cast, not just me. Do you but, still keep in touch with the cast? Yeah, I do. I mean, we, of course, we were all together for Jimmy Fallon, yeah, uh, right. the reunion back in February, which actually started with me four years ago going and doing a surprise appearance for my school, University of Tennessee Chattanooga. Nice, yeah. And it went so crazy that they decided to try to reunite us. Uh, we did a couple of tries and couldn't get everybody. But when they came to Los Angeles, Mike DiCenzo, I just want to say his name, he wrote this sketch. It was amazing. And that's what you saw. And that was our hallway that we used that was in LA right in the same hallway they brought the set to the stage and built it in a matter of seconds so we could do it right there on the show was there anything that you were reminiscing about during that time from the old days you couldn't help but feel it you know I mean standing next to Mario waiting to go on you go out in the hall and there was a new student out there this Fallon kid I don't know what the deal was exactly 31 million views later was so popular you know you grew up I grew up watching you as well so it's a big deal to have you here in Atlantic City Talk Whitney it has your name on it the has microphone. my name go to Whitney you know that's that's what it is Whitney I'm right here in Atlantic City so talk to us about the presidential election what's your thoughts on that you know I really don't get into politics here's what I'll say there's so much vitriol and so much negativity I would like to find somebody who's positive who can you can compete and you can debate and all that stuff without and I'm not talking about any one person, and I'm not talking about any one side. I really miss the mutual respect that they say they have, but only show it when they're off stage, not when they're on. That's, that's really my thoughts. So you're not going to tell us who you're going to vote for? No, I, because as an actor, sometimes people think they, they should have their opinion matters on that. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, everybody's opinion matters on that. Okay. You're going to make up your own mind, and, and whatever it is, whoever we get, it's a really tough time. And I hope we get the right person. We will. We'll get the right person. Now, talk to us about Charlie Sheen. This is a big deal in the news right there's now. A, there's like going from presidential to Charlie. Uh, I'm worried for him. I care about him as a person. I think as a human being on the planet, uh, whatever his choices were, whatever he ended up doing, it's brought him to this point in his life. And thank God it's not full-blown, but he has uh, faced it head-on. He has medication like... 
like Mr. Johnson, like, like Irvin Johnson. And that if he takes the medication, then he'll, he'll live a, a, a life that's fine. Let's just hope he stays on. And not everybody can afford that, you know? So, do you know him personally? I do not. Okay. Uh, I just, I wish him well. Why, yeah, I'm not going to like put him down or this or that, you know. Yeah. The, the guy's in a tough spot, and hopefully it'll get his attention, and, and he'll have a good life. Fast. Behind the scenes, uh, what's one funny story from Saved by the Bell? You know how we used to, Screech used to come out of the lockers? Yeah. So what they do is they have to, as he got older, they had to take that top shelf out. But in rehearsals, they would say, okay, load Screech in the locker. So one day they put Screech in the locker, put Dustin in the locker, and the direct, we're rehearsing. And the director looks at all of us and he goes, and we all tiptoed off the set and just waited. And Dustin's in there, guys, guys, really funny guys. And then they finally had to let him out of the locker. I mean, that, that's as bad as it got. You know, they, listen, everybody was in school all day or they were working on the set. This is a really good group of, of people, and they still are. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here in Atlantic City. Dennis Haskins, Mr. Belding, everybody. I love it. How are you? New Jersey. So uh, thank you guys for coming out. I want you guys to have fun. So DJ, let's turn it up.